Today we're going to learn about some of the ways that museums use ultraviolet light as an analytical tool. We're going to start here in the archaeology lab and I'm going to show you how we use this ultraviolet light box to identify various types of artifacts and in some cases identify residues that have survived archaeologically. We have a variety of different items here that we're going to shine with ultraviolet light. Um, the first artifact category is glass. We've got leaded glass, non-leaded glass, and soda lime glass. And all of these glow different colors under the ultraviolet light, but they're very difficult to identify with the naked eye. We also have hard paste porcelain and soft paste porcelain. Again, to the naked eye, it's somewhat difficult to tell for certain whether they're hard paste or soft paste, and that's where the UV light comes in handy. And lastly, we're going to look at this lovely little repaired teapot and we're going to show you how the glues that were used to mend this pot are visible under UV light. First we're going to look at the three different types of glass that we see commonly in the archaeology lab. We're going to look at three different types of clear glass and the only way to identify them properly is to use the ultraviolet light. The first piece that you're looking at is clear non-leaded glass. The second piece, which glows a faint uh, greenish yellow color, had soda lime added to it, which gives it that color under the UV light. Now this last one that we're going to look at, also clear glass, but under the UV light you can see that it glows a brilliant ice blue, and that means that lead has been added to the glass. Now here we have two different types of porcelain. One is hard paste, one is soft paste. With the naked eye, they both appear white in color. However, underneath the UV light, we can tell that the hard paste porcelain uh, glows a dark purple, sometimes almost blackish color under UV light, while the soft paste porcelain glows a soft violet color. This cute little teapot that we have here has actually been broken by us in the archaeology lab and mended using a hide glue, which was a glue that was very common during the 18th century. And while you can't really see the glue very well in the broad daylight, when we put it under the black light, you're going to notice that the glue will become very apparent as it glows a eye-popping ice blue color. Knowing this, we can then take archaeological sherds that we suspect may have glues on them and use the UV light to identify them. Now we're here at Kenmore and Megan is going to show us how we use UV lights to analyze works of art. So what is the light going to reveal about this painting here? Well, we usually use UV lights like this to uh, tell us a bit about the history of a painting, especially paintings that we don't know very much about. Um, it shows us things like how many generations of conservation work it's had, how many repairs, uh, damage that's sustained in its past, overpainting, loss of painting, varnish, glaze, that sort of thing. It basically tells us how rough of a life a painting has had. Megan's climbed the ladder, and we're going to view the painting in broad daylight. Then the shutters in the room will be closed, and Megan will shine the UV light on the painting and see what it reveals. Okay, so what we're seeing here is evidence of a lot of damage in this painting's past. Uh, this is a painting of Fielding Lewis by John Morliston, done about 1765. So in the intervening years, you can see that a lot of paint, those dark areas, was lost. It chipped off, flaked off, has been overpainted. You can see that there have been tears in the canvas along his left shoulder. You can see specifically there, there are some large tears that happened in the canvas and were restitched. And there's quite a bit of new varnish, or new to the painting varnish, that has been added over the years as well. Those are the bright, shiny areas that you see. 